Welcome to episode 16 of Game Dev. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at asynchronous functions and actually loading things in the future. Um, now, I want to go over this a little bit more than usual, so we're just going to focus in on this, and this is going to be used for when we actually create our level, which we're going to be doing next episode. This is kind of like the foundation for it. Uh, we're going to be using a program called Tiled to create our tile map. Um, it's a pretty good program. It's out there. It's free. You can go download it as you want. Uh, what it does is it allows you to visually draw your, your levels and such, and then it returns it in, in a format, either XML or JSON. And so we need to be able to load that in, or any type of level that we're loading, we need to be able to load it in here, unless we were doing uh, randomly generated. So let's actually get into this now. We're going to be using something called an asynchronous function. Now, if you don't know what an asynchronous function is, I first need to tell you about a synchronous function. Now, this game right now is a synchronous game. It runs in one thread, and one thread only. The game will start up and it'll just run through this code, hit the start function, the start function will go and run this over and over and over again, and that's all done in one single thread. And that might, that's not good if you want to load some extra data, like this texture right here. This loads synchronously with the main function. But the problem with that is this is going to pause the function while we're waiting for this input here. And that's not a good thing to do. That's kind of why we added this kind of stuff here. It's not really a good thing to do, especially if we're using large files like this tile map that we're using. They can be very large. So we need to, we want a method to load those outside of this so we can still render and stuff while we're waiting for that input to come in. That's done with asynchronous functions. So we need to import our package here. And we're going to import dart async. Okay. And I'm going to add this function in the main uh, file, but outside the main class, the main game class, just so that we can use it all throughout our, our um, packages and files without actually having to instance something. So we're going to do that right here, and we're going to say, uh, it's going to return a future string, with string, and it's going to take a path or a URL. Now the future class is going to be returned from our completer, and if you don't really know what a completer is, it's a class that allows us to call to use callbacks. So we can instantiate this class, return the actual completer, and whenever it's finished, it'll run a function inside that completer, and that function will then run whenever it's called, and we don't actually have to worry about when it's called because it will return at some point. So we're actually going to create that right now. Completer string completer equals new completer. Okay, and now we just need to create the actual request that we're going to be sending to this completer. So this is going to be an HTTP request because we need data from HTTP. Uh. Okay, and we're just going to open this again. So we're going to say rec.open. And we want to use get and we also want to just pass the URL here now there's two different types of methods that we could use here get and post get allows us to include arguments inside the URL and post kinds of sends them kind of sort of in an object not really um, but we're just gonna use get because we're gonna simplify this and we don't really need any extra parameters here uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say rec dot onload end this is gonna be at the very end of everything when it's all loaded we're gonna get the first instance and we're going to say, then, and do this. Here's the function. If the request status starts off with a two, weird. So if it's some form of a 200 you, uh, status, we're good, and we got something out of return. So we're going to say completer.complete. We're going to say request.response as string. We want it to return as a string again, as we see up there. And if it's not, then what we're going to do is we're going to say completer uh, complete error, and we're just going to say can't load URL, pass it the URL, say response type rec.status. Okay, so that's actually going to set up all the loading of it. Now we actually need to send the request, so we're going to say request.send, but we don't need to send it any data. And then we're just going to return the completer. Uh, future. Okay. So this function here, again, let me just go over it. Uh, we're going to take our completer object and we're going to send the HTTP request. And once that request has completed, we're going to do the callback, either the complete callback or the complete error callback in this completer function. It's going to return one of those at whatever time it's completed. And then that's just going to return once it's all done. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Next episode, we're actually going to be getting into tiled and how that works. So. That's it for this episode. You can, you can use any type of tile format you want if you really want to. You can use a simple uh, spring, like a limited string for uh, 
where something's filled and where it's not filled. Uh, that's fine too. It's however you want. If you guys already know how to do tile maps, you can you can load that in. I have other videos on tile maps, uh, but we're just going to be using tile for this series. Leave a comment in the description if you guys have any questions. Uh, check out the Patreon for force, full source code access to this and what's actually changed and stuff like that. If you want to get in contact with me or whatever, you don't have to support. It's just an extra way to help the channel out. So I thank you guys and I'll see you guys next time.